Qualifying for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix is over and Max Verstappen takes the final pole position of the year. But what did we learn? Well, in this video, I am going to be taking a look at the data and doing a data analysis from qualifying. Now, let's get into the video. As usual, I'm going to be talking about Aston Martin, McLaren, Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. Qualifying in Abu Dhabi, as it does pretty much every year, saw a very large amount of circuit evolutions as the sessions went on. Because of this, no one actually wanted to leave the garage for the first few minutes in Q1 which was kind of weird. Usually a few drivers go out early at the beginning. However, due to the track continually cooling down, no one wanted to be the first one out in the worst conditions. To show how the circuit improved, I have the times of Max Verstappen in qualifying. Here you can see that his times improved by over a second from the start of Q1 to the end of Q3. For some other drivers, the time improvement was even more impressive than what Max Verstappen's was. However, Verstappen was the driver on pole, so we are looking at his times. Let's now look at that time from Q1 and compare it to his pole lap in Q3. And what can we see here to see how Verstappen gained over a second? Well, into Turn 1, you can see how Max is able to carry a little bit more speed in Turn 1 in Q3, and he can get back onto throttle sooner than in Q1. Down the main straight, rather surprisingly, Max had a higher top speed in Q1. The reason for this is because Verstappen was able to get a slight toe from the car ahead, helping him to go slightly faster and reach a higher top speed. Going into the chicane at the end of long straight, you can see how Verstappen is able to absolutely attack the corners in Q3 in a way that he simply cannot in Q1. And finally, in Sector 3, going through all of the tighter and more twisty corners, Verstappen carries more speed in Q3, and finally going through the final corner, Verstappen is able to attack the corner in Q3, and is later on the brakes. All of this together led to an improvement of 1.1 seconds. His Q1 lap was a 124.554 here, and his Q3 lap at the end was a 123.445. After qualifying, it became very clear that the soft compound tyres were good for one lap only. Because of this, I don't anticipate that we will see the softs being used at all in the main Grand Prix. At the start of Q2, the majority of drivers opted to use the same soft tyres that they ended Q1 with, and we saw that the lap times the drivers were able to do was nowhere near what they were able to do on fresh tyres, showing that the tyres just did not have the life in them to do multiple laps. After qualifying today in the midfield, what teams did look good and what teams didn't look so good? Well, one team that seemed to really struggle was the Williams team, as Albon is down in 14th place, and Logan Sargent officially never set a lap time due to both his laps being deleted for track limits. This for the Williams team is really not great, especially as one of the Alpha Tauris is starting the race in 6th place. Let's take a look at Albon's lap from Q2 and compare it to Oscar Piastri's Q2 lap as Piastri finished Q2 in 10th place. Albon here does have a nice straight line speed advantage and you can see that going down every straight Albon makes up time. But at the end of straights, with the faster time is Piastri. This is something that we should expect given how strong the Williams is in a straight line. However, when they hit the brakes, the Williams does not have the grip and cannot turn in the slow speeds like the McLaren can. This leads to Albon losing all of his advantage from the straight. Then going into the final sector, you can see just how the Williams is lacking grip versus McLaren. This is something we should expect and it shows where Williams really needs to improve the car for next year. They need more downforce on the car, as they have not really developed the car since the Canadian Grand Prix, and it should not be a surprise that they have fallen behind. Hopefully, the reason for not developing the car is that they are planning something completely different for next year, and we should then see Williams back towards the midfield, fighting the top teams in the midfield, and maybe even fighting for 5th place. Williams might have struggled, but one team, or at least driver, who had a strong day was Yuki Tsunoda in the Alpha Tauri, as he finished qualifying in 6th place, and he's put his car in the perfect place to potentially allow Alpha Tauri to finish 7th in the Constructors Championship. Alpha Tauri have been aggressively upgrading the car, so much so that they even brought a car upgrade to Abu Dhabi, as they continue to move their car closer to Red Bull in preparation for next season. Let's compare the times of Sonoda to Gasly, as Gasly finished in P10 in Q3, to see where that time really came from. 
Things here are pretty difficult to read, sadly, due to the colours being very similar, so I do apologise about that. But we can see some interesting things. The Alphatari, as it has been everywhere except Mexico and Brazil, are slow in a straight line. They still have a fairly draggy car and are slightly slower than Gasly in the Alpine, despite the fact that Alpine has less power than Honda. However, it is able to get great traction on the exit of corners, giving it a good punch down the straights in the initial phase. Also, the mechanical grip of the AlphaTauri has dramatically improved as the season has gone on. And this means that through the tight and twisty section of Sector 3, you can see Sonoda is able to go significantly faster. And this is where he secures that fantastic result. For Sonoda, he needs to replicate this result in the race. And if he does, then it will still be possible that AlphaTauri beat Williams to 7th in the Constructors' Championship and earn that all-important extra money at the end of the year. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video, then I would appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm on my way to 5k subs, and I would really appreciate it if you help me get there. Now though, let's get back to the video, and let's talk about the top 5 teams, starting with Aston Martin. For Aston Martin, qualifying today was a bit of a struggle, as Fernando Alonso is lining up in 7th place on the grid, and his teammate Lance Stroll was eliminated in Q2, and is starting down in 13th place. It was always going to be an uphill battle, in my opinion, for Aston Martin to beat McLaren. However, now it is starting to feel like it might be impossible. But they are still battling McLaren. So let's compare the fastest time of Alonso to Oscar Piastri to see where Alonso was losing out against the fastest McLaren driver from today. They have very equal straight line speed, which was consistent with what we saw in practice. For Aston though, they really lose out in Sector 3 and they cannot enter the corners with the same amount of speed compared to the McLaren teams. And in the final corner, Alonso doesn't carry anywhere near as much speed. It was looking unlikely going into this weekend, but now for me it is impossible that Aston Martin will beat McLaren to 4th place in the Constructors' Championship. For Aston Martin though, this is probably not a bad thing. Money's not an issue for them, so that 5th place will mean more development time for them next year, which they absolutely could do with. For McLaren, it was looking like they were going to be the team that is closest to Max Verstappen in the Red Bull, but a mistake in the final lap by Lando Norris meant that he finished qualifying in 5th place, and Oscar Piastri is starting the race in 3rd place. So let's compare the fastest time of Piastri to Max Verstappen to see where he lost out. Through the first sector, Piastri is actually faster than Max, which is something we saw all through qualifying. But when it comes to Sector 2, Verstappen in the Red Bull was on another planet. Verstappen was significantly faster down the straights, and the rotation of the car in the slow speed was very, very impressive. For McLaren, they are in a great position now to skew a fourth in the championship, and it could be very possible that both cars end the race on the podium. But it doesn't look like they'll be able to face Max Verstappen. Verstappen just has so much grip and confidence in that Red Bull car, and it just turns so much better than anything else. So McLaren, they're in a good position for a podium, but it looks like it's going to be second and third. For Ferrari, today was a mixed bag day. Charles Leclerc put in an incredible lap and ended the day in second place on the grid for the Grand Prix, but teammate Carlos Sainz is starting the race all the way down in 16th place. This may have been a great lap by Leclerc, but I think it is going to be a very difficult race for the Ferrari team as they're going to have to worry about tyre wear. Whenever Leclerc did a run on used softs, he was a very long way off the pace. This tells me that they could really struggle when it comes to the race tomorrow. But for now, let's compare the times of Leclerc to Verstappen to see where Charles lost out. In the highest speed corners, it looks like Verstappen was able to carry a little bit more speed, but through Sector 3 in the tighter twisty corners, Leclerc is able to close the gap. And like we saw in practice, Leclerc was able to fly through the final corner. As I said though, Ferrari had a great final lap with Leclerc, but the race is going to be difficult. And I can see them struggling with tyre wear, making a podium difficult to come by sadly for them. But it might be just enough for them to beat the Mercedes. For Mercedes though, qualifying today was alright. George Russell was able to put a very good lap in at the end of the session to secure 4th place, although it probably would have been 5th place if not for Norris's error. But his teammate Hamilton once again finds himself eliminated in Q2, as Hamilton it feels like is patiently waiting for the season to end. Mercedes were probably lucky that Sainz was eliminated in Q1, otherwise they would be very much at risk of losing 2nd place. 
for Russell, let's compare his time to that of Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. In Sector 1 and going into the hairpin, he actually has the edge over the Ferrari driver. This is carried all the way until the end of the long straight, when the speed of the Ferrari means that it is able to overtake the Mercedes. This is really the only way Ferrari looks like it will be able to maintain position, because the race pace of the Mercedes is stronger, but Ferrari will have a straight line speed advantage. Though, that being said, on the flip side, Mercedes is looking like it could be better on the tyres. And if it is better on tyres, then there is a good chance that as the stints wear on, Mercedes come back at Ferrari, and we might still see Russell beat Charles Leclerc. And finally for Red Bull, qualifying today was simply lovely for Max Verstappen as he takes one final pole position. However, for his teammate Sergio Perez, things are not looking quite as strong as he ended qualifying in ninth place due to having a lap time deleted. But even so, he was not looking that strong in qualifying. He was almost eliminated in the first part along with Sainz, and when you compare the fastest laps of Perez and Verstappen, they are even all the way until the end of the long straight. And after this point, Verstappen just gets a better exit and carries a huge advantage all the way around the rest of the lap. In the tight corners as well, Verstappen is faster than Perez, and with that, he secures pole position. And note that this lap time from Perez was the one that was even deleted. His actual lap time is even slower. So with that in mind then, what do I think will be the top five for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix? Well, in P5, I think it'll be Sergio Perez. P4 will be Charles Leclerc. P3 will be Oscar Piastri. P2 will be Lando Norris. And yes, I know it's the boring answer, but to round off the season of domination, it will be Max Verstappen to win the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. But that is what I think. The question is, what do you guys think? In the comments down below, let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.